um, well, thanks for having us here. Um, you never really know with these type of games. We obviously had them watched two, three times now. But obviously, I think with the ruling, they can change. They can play all the players. Is that correct? Correct, yeah. So you never really know. But I mean, you've got a basic idea. I think it's always important to know what you're facing. I think, um, but you know, we'll treat the game with respect it deserves, and play properly, and uh, and put out a team that's hopefully competitive, and you know, and then the rest must take care of itself. So I'm sure, you know, they'll be up for us, and we make sure, we got to make sure that we match the intensity and play with it with the right attitude and the right desire, and then um, yeah, then the rest must, you can only control that. Coach, let's take questions from the floor. Just by a show of hands, Temba Shavalana, <coughs> I've noted you, Lorenz. Coach, um, I'm tempted to ask you about your second goal in, in your PSL match, in your previous match, but it's a story for another day. Coach, you're playing against on Rock Stars teams that an ordinary football fan would not know much about. How much homework does that give you? And what does it mean to you, knowing very well that you've got a youthful side that can match them on the day? Are you tempted to go on a full-on, you know, squad, or are you, are we seeing you continuing to give your youngsters a chance? And if I may add this one, Tim, we've just been informed that John Reed has passed away. You are a big fan of um, himself and his work and stuff like that. What does it say to Coach Gavin? Well, firstly, more important things is uh, the passing away of John. I mean, it was very sudden. I mean, I knew, I mean, in the soccer fraternity and the football fraternity, we all knew very well. Um, you know, he was a great servant to the game. I mean, you know, what he achieved in the game was also very good, high standards. I mean, Nations Cups and Champions Leagues and things like that. So, you know, it's very sad, the passing, very sudden. I, mean, I didn't know if there was anything happening, you know, what's going on recently with John. Because, I mean, we lost touch, like, you know, what happens in football. But uh, certainly, it was a huge blow, you know, waking up there this morning. So, um, you know, like everybody, certainly condolences to his family and his, his, his immediate family, which is the most important people that are going to be affected. But certainly, it's a great loss. Um, John was a hell of a guy, a hell of a player. So, yeah, it was very sudden and just been thrown on us this morning. So. You know, I just hope that everything's uh, been taken care of. Uh, you know, after you know, after his passing, so it's really sad. And um, uh, he was a big servant of certainly super sport. You know, at the latter stage of his career. I mean, him and Tommy played together, so you know, knew them well. And um, yeah, you know, this is part of life, and it's really sad. So you know, there's enough thoughts and prayers at this moment. You know, the family. Yeah, from the first one was about you rotate the squad, keep the well, same. Yeah, you know? I mean, you, you know, we've got the smallest squad in the league. Um, so, you know, I've got to look at a few, so we've got to look at certain positions where, we, you know, where we've got problems and where we don't have problems. I mean, I don't have to, it's pretty well documented where we've got problems. So, um, we're going to have to be very careful how we manage the squad uh, for next week's game, which is the game after. But the most important game in football is always the next one, which is uh, on Wednesday. So, as I said, you know, for me, we've got to put a, we'll put a team out that's very competitive. You know, we've got a team already, um, which we worked with this morning. So, yeah, I, I, that's what we can do. All right, so let's move along to Coach Lorenz. Um, you are uh, CEO with the uh, shows in your in the history coaching in this country, how much emphasis are you putting on the players to win this trophy this season? Well, I don't know if we, how close we are. I mean, we might be second, but you know, long way away. Um, I think it's important that we try to instill in the club and the players the mentality of the next game is the most important game. So be it whatever it is, um, you know, the cup are very competitive in this country because obviously people see it as a way of you know, extra finances um, and if you get sometimes lucky with a draw like some teams have in the net bank they've got right through to finals and semi-finals without really playing anybody of any you know uh, <laughs> of playing you know in terms of playing in the same sort of league teams are in the same league I don't mean it like that um, but, you know um, 
but you can also things can turn on you, you know, if you don't treat the game with respect. So I mean, I've never treated any game with disrespect. We are friendly. Uh, we need to play properly, but we we have to look at our squad and try and manage it through this period where we're having problems. You know? All right, uh, moving right along. Looking for new hands. Okay, uh, let's give the leader an opportunity. I also wanted you, Karama. Yes, um, Coach, I just want to look at um, the competitive uh, team uh, that you've brought this season. I mean, um, you, you came in at Super Sport when we all felt it's depleted and you we were starting a new project. Um, and now, I think, maybe you can correct me, I think the last time the team finished in the top four was when you were there the last time. Um, this competitive uh, team that we've brought together and also being able to, to meet the experience uh, players um, with the young stars. And I, I look at how Marcelo took um, that goal um, this weekend, I think it's a third goal already, um, to, to, to have young stars who are already um, catching up um, in only their first uh, season, how, how, how has this uh, been able to, to be achieved by Supersport? Well, I mean, if you look at over the two leagues, the Disky League and the, and the Premier League, which club is... What's the word to say? You know, look where both teams are. So I think it's important that it was something that started in COVID times, um, at Supersport, where the Disky team sort of came to the first team. And I've just carried on with that because a lot of them I've taken already and played, and given their debuts, and, and they, some of them, a lot of them had their debuts last season. So we will continue. That's the policy of the club. You know, we're not a buying club. We're a club that's going to have to produce our own. Um, and that's what they've done over the last, since I was here the first time. So we've had to box clever and do the right things and try and get the right players in. And obviously the Disky team was doing well. Um, a lot of those players will come into the first team, in, which I have this year already, like Maseka, uh, and will go on next season because of the financial constraints. And we have to do it that way. So that's the bottom line. All right, uh, you, you're okay? Yeah, just one more. Okay. okay. Yes, so just to continue on this coach, I was talking to Tyson the other day, and he was also telling me about um, the mentorship uh, role he's played uh, in some of the young stars. I think he mentioned now, he also mentioned uh, Liama. Um, this experience, um, type of player that you've got, I'm sure you're also looking at them as an asset in terms of the project that you're going with. Well, that was the whole idea, bringing in players like uh, Tyson to the squad. Um, I mean, he's still, I think his best years are still ahead of him as a centre back. Centre backs only mature at 34, 35, mm -hmm. in my opinion. The best ones in the world are all over 30. So he's still he's 30, 31, I mean, he's still but years ahead of him. So um, he came to the squad and he's done a hell of a job. Obviously he's had a, a bad injury now, but I mean that's just part and parcel of the game. But he'll come back and, and every day <coughs> the leadership, you know, we've got two very good centre backs in the Disky and they will play a big part in the future of this football club, in my opinion. So they're the next ones coming in. So that's, that's about keeping that the whole system going in which we do which the club has always been known for, and then obviously, you know, they get sold off to that. <laughs> but that's that's the nature, that's the, the the DNA of our football club. Okay, Carabo. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Coach. Uh, you've spoken about, you know, the, the importance of mixing youth and experience, and I'm looking at your Disky team because I've had an opportunity to work with them closely. Coach, you look at a player such as Hapi Moral, who hasn't really had a lot of opportunities in the first team, uh, and one of the most important aspects in football is simplicity is the most important, uh, difficult rather, and he's done that so, so well for the Disky team. Is that? Do we, Hapi, Hapi Moral. Oh, uh, uh, Hapi, yeah. do, we, do, do we see him playing as well as such as uh, Jabu Matiu as well? Players Could play are, tomorrow. Yeah. Hmm? Simple as that, Coach. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Are you? Not tomorrow. Is that as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, my Okay, Mashat. Um, coach, good. I noted you there. <laughs> coach, um, going along with this thing of the youth, um, we've reached the, the business end of the, of the season now in the domestic production. We have given youngsters a chance. There's been a couple of stellar boys in Sundowns. We've raised their hands. Um, 
If I were to approach you and say, who would be your pick for the young player of the season? Um, who sure. would that be? But earlier, um, I mean, how do you classify young? <laughs> in South Africa, we classify young maybe 24, 25, you know, so it's. I, that, that, I don't really know going down here, do It's a net bank cup, isn't it? But a young player should be, certainly for me, under 20, first year in the PSL, something, there should be some criteria. Well, there's been a lot of young players win the award that have been. It's under 21, coaching. Is it? PSL is it? Is it under 21? Yes. Okay. So maybe, you know, that should be. So these, I mean, we will have a few, certainly in the running. Hopefully we can get, you know, come in and see. I don't know how many too many clubs will have you know, in the running, but we've got 17, 18 year olds at play, you know. So, um, yeah. So I don't, I don't, it's difficult to answer that question. And it's still, I think, it's a long way to go. All right, uh, Newsroom Africa there. Coach, uh, you're a coach here from Newsroom Africa. You've mentioned how stretched your squad is and how small a squad you have. Um, but should you progress in this competition and also in the league, second spot becomes more and more of a reality. I know you as a serial winner, but which one of these competitions would you then start to prioritize? Which one do you think would be more significant to show for Super Sports United at the end of, at the, end of the season and at the Cup Trophy or being able to compete in Africa at the next season? Uh, both. And the next game. Uh, you, you're not in a luxury of prioritising. I don't think you're in a luxury. So we've got to prioritise every game. Um, the only time, as I say, when it comes to suspensions and injuries, that's where the, you know, the, the, the discussion comes. But other than that, you know, as I said, we're playing the best team that's available with the right, you know. Um, we can't put a play in that's struggling a bit as a train Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, train Friday, and play Saturday. I don't think that's the right, you know, that's the type of thing. So we'll see. But we pretty much picked a team already for Wednesday, you know, this morning. Which normally happens at our club anyway. Monday the team's picked for Saturday. Thank you, Coach. Uh, it's Coach Michali. Coach Michali from the Stanley's paper. Coach, maybe you can just enlighten us on the move of Sakeli Pasa to, to Supersport. Uh, how did it come about? Because it happened on the final day of the transfer window. And also, uh, what is it that is brought into training and obviously the match that is already played uh, this past weekend? I think in, uh, in every department in a football team, you need players to play in a position, but you also need different types of players. So, if you look at our strike force, and we've got very similar type of strikers. So we needed something different. I always felt we needed something different. Um, and he gives us something different. So, that's pretty much how the whole thing came about. You know, because of, and obviously, I'm not involved in the, the actual deal, but I can only say X, Y, Z, we need something like this or like that. And I think he gives us that. Um, so let's see how, you know, it's still the start. And I threw him straight in. People said I was mad, which I am, but yeah. You know, but I think that's the only way to, you know, it's like you're signing a player for 50 million and they say, well, we have to coach him. Are you joking with me? He's <laughs> playing, you know what I mean? So that's it. Thank you, Coach. Uh, second round of questions. Let's go to Pendulo. I've noted. Coach, when you start from the day, son, coach. <coughs> coach, um, the North Stars coach here, Cody so just left him. He spoke highly of you on how you play your football, and it seems like he has a certain idea on how you're going to play your football. Do you, do you then, um, since it's hard to get some sort of video analysis on them, but do you then use um, a word of mouth or send some scouts to to see how they play their football since they are around in Pretoria? And how, 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 how do you think it's going to turn out on, on, on Wednesday night? Thank you. I think, um, I think any coach, and I say this to a lot of young coaches that come in now, I think it's important to concentrate on your own team and try and coach a team that, with what you've got. But do know a little bit about the opposition, you know, X, Y, Z. And I think it's very important. I think there's too much analysis of opposition when you should be trying to concentrate on what you're trying to do. And if you be good at what you do, at the level, whatever level it is, then I think you'll be successful. But I think, uh, obviously, on, you know, uh, 
the opposition on Wednesday of watch, they can watch the games all the time because they're on television. But as I said, we have watched them and got the scouting report, which are, you know, pretty consistent. Um, but the most important thing, what we do and try and do what we do well and try and be effective in that, I think that's important. And the rest, you know, yes, you do need to know about the opposition, X, Y, Z, but uh, I think it's important to concentrate on, you know, um, and try and perfect and be good and be predictable. I like to be predictable, but be good at being predictable. That, you know, that's just a overview. Yeah. Okay, Lorenz, do you have a question? <coughs> okay. Let's move on to Temba. Um, Coach, I just, uh, now that you spoke about Zakele, it takes me to Ikram Reynas. We saw him banging goals at, at Stelis with them. He came to Super Sport, but there was, there was no ignition, maybe if I may use that word, of himself. But then he went back to Stelis and he already has a goal and, and, and an assist in his first match with them. Coach, if you, I mean, if you can take us through what happens to Cape players when they go inland, is it, is it a mental thing and, or is it a physical thing or is it has to do with the weather? Why is it that we find Cape Town players struggling when they come to Gauteng specifically? Well, I don't know so much about that. I've had, we've had lots of Cape Town players playing in Java. We won the leagues with Cape Town players. Um, so I hear that, that statement, but for me, guys, the player's not happy, must go. Was he not happy? <laughs> Was he not happy, Cole? <laughs> so that's, that's it. Why keep an happy player? And, you know, no hard feelings. He wanted to leave and that was it. So... All right. Uh, <laughs> let's, move let's leave it there. Um, any takers for the last round of questions? Are we all covered? Okay, there's still two more hands. Let's go back to your number and then we also have Vili. You can go ahead, bro. Coach, um, this is also not to do with this match specifically. It's another death. We just lost a young man. I know you're a person that likes to coach young players and guide them through. We just lost a young man, also with Andres. Um, can we just hear your thoughts on that particular uh, instance, you know, and the potential that the young man had and how far with your observation you think he could have gotten now uh, uh, football ranks. Thank you, Coach. You know, in, uh, I've had a few in my time. Um, but when a player with potential like that and that type of player, because we don't have those players in South Africa, um, you know, it just started his career and how it happened. I've heard the story. I mean, it's, it's very sad. Um, and. Um, She's like to, to, to Rob and Adi and, and Stella Mosh and Steve and all of them down there. And they do a hell of a job there. And, um, and I know what this boy, where he came from. I know the area well from there, down that side. Um, sure. And it's not the first, you know, there's been many similar stories. So, sure. It's, it's really sad to see what's happened. And I don't even know what to say. I mean, really, it's a touchy one. Especially the young boy that age, you know, and how it's happened. So, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I don't know what else to say. Just certainly condolences to everybody again, and uh, my thoughts and prayers on the Stella Moshe FC, you know, because I think it's going to knock them out, that's for sure. He's a good young player. <laughs>